The Sahara covers an incredible area of 9.2 million square kilometers, and yet the endless desert has hardly been archaeologically explored. No one knows what undiscovered secrets lie in that area, which is 26 times larger than Germany. What we do know, however, is that an ancient cave lies dormant in the Egyptian Gilf el Kibir Plateau, granting us a breathtaking insight into the Sahara's green past. The mysterious Cave of the Swimmers bears witness to the fact that the harsh desert has by no means always had the dust-dry face it presents to us today. But why is the interpretation of the millennia-old cave painting still hotly debated? And who were the people who created these unique testimonies 8,000 years ago? If you are familiar with the novel or the film adaptation of the same name, The English Patient, then you are sure to be familiar with the Cave of the Swimmers. No wonder, since the mysterious rock world plays a central role in the Oscar-winning love drama from 1996, but whether the Hungarian explorer Ladislaw Almasse also had future cinema hits in mind when he discovered the real cave of the swimmers in October 1933 is, of course, a completely different matter. Prior to this, Almasse had come across a series of strange markings on the surface of some boulders during a reconnaissance flight over the Gilf el Kaber Plateau in the Sahara, near the Egyptian border with Libya. It soon became clear that these were by no means an idiosyncratic whim of nature, but an irreplaceable testimony to the times, one that even plunged the world view of the time into chaos. However, the same did not apply to the actual cave. This was not cut into the rock using some lost laser technology, but quite simply through the erosion of soft limestone. Over time, rain and groundwater gradually dissolved the limestone, ultimately creating a natural network of tunnels and cavities that were used by humans for ritual burials. In this regard, experts assume that the burial era took place sometime between 8000 BC and 300 AD. The actual centerpiece of the cave, however, is the fascinating paintings which, according to current doctrine, were created around 8,000 years ago. However, many of these ancient artworks are very difficult to see with the naked eye, and before the cave was supplied with electricity and electric light in 1985, quite a few of them seemed completely invisible. Despite all of this, Ladislaw Almasse realized as early as the 1930s that it was not just any old motifs that were being immortalized here for posterity. While the cave walls are adorned with animals such as giraffes, goats, and cattle, they also show human figures that appear to be swimming. But how was that even possible? After all, the Sahara is considered the largest dry desert in the world where cool water does not exactly abound. Despite all this, Almasse remained unwavering in his interpretation of the images. He even devoted an entire chapter to the Cave of the Swimmers in his book Unknown Sahara, which was published in 1934. In it, he explained to the reader that the cave scenes reflect real images of life at the time. In other words, the inhabitants of the Sahara in the past were actually happily splashing around in the desert. However, at the time this theory was, to put it mildly, unusual. What's more, it seemed so unthinkable to the book's first editor that he felt compelled to add several footnotes to the chapter, sharply criticizing the idea. When the desert was still full of water. In fact, criticism of Almasse's interpretation was to continue unabated in the decades that followed. Quite the opposite. The Hungarian researcher Andres Zobere still holds the view today that the cave paintings did not show people swimming at all, but rather a motif that has a purely symbolic character. In detail, the alleged swimmers would move in a straight line towards figures that Zubere describes as headless beasts. Consequently, it seems more likely that the people are floating through the air instead of moving in the water. However, the deeper meaning that is to be conveyed by this and what the said beasts are all about is completely unknown. What is known, however, is the fact that the Sahara, which today is the epitome of a bone-dry desert world, had a completely different face in the past. What seems practically unimaginable today was once reality thousands of years ago. The Sahara was a green flourishing habitat crisscrossed by countless lakes, rivers, and savanna landscapes. And strictly speaking, the wet traces of the past are still visible today. 
We only have to look at the watering hole called Gluta Diarche in the east of the Sahara, which is still fed by the groundwater that once fell from the sky in the form of rain. But the desert also contains numerous remains of once mighty lakes, and by that we really do mean huge. Located in the eponymous Chad Basin in Central Africa, the Mega Chad is thought to have an area of 1.95 million square kilometers 55,000 years ago. By way of comparison, the Caspian Sea, which today represents the largest lake in the world, is about five times smaller. But while the gigantic body of water continued to shrink over time and split into significantly smaller residual lakes, the desert is subject to a constant interplay of dry and humid phases. Analysis of different rock layers has shown that the Sahara has blossomed a total of 230 times over the last 8 million years. In detail, the green periods alternate with the dry phases at intervals of about 20,000 years. But when it comes to the comparatively recent past, a 2009 study concluded that the Sahara had presented its sprouting face three times in the past 200,000 years, and not just for a few years, but for several millennia at a time. The last humid period to date began around 14,000 BC in West Africa, and it took another 6,000 years before the blooming arm of the Sahara extended to the east of the continent. And while the green desert was still home to hippos, elephants, giraffes, and gazelles at that time, our distant ancestors also followed the fertile path of the Sahara. Consequently, the Neolithic Revolution, the phase in which humans exchanged their nomadic life as hunters and gatherers for a life as settled farmers, may have reached the Sahara in the 6th millennium BC. However, we know of no large urban civilization that developed in the region during this literal heyday. What is certain, however, is that sometime between 4000 and 3500 BC, the next phase of the Sahara began and this once habitable world was once again transformed into a merciless desert within a few centuries or even decades. Consequently, people retreated from the Sahara to the south or to the fertile Nile Delta, and the knowledge of the desert's once vibrant past was visibly forgotten. The Mystery of the True Background At this point, it should be noted that Ladislaw Almasse could actually have been right in his interpretation of the Cave of the Swimmers. Because if the paintings were really created 8,000 years ago, this was a time when the Sahara still had countless bodies of water. However, even those who agree on the swimmers' interpretation cannot say with absolute certainty what the scene shows exactly, and why they were made at all. In principle, however, the Cave of the Swimmers could depict an ancient underground water system that was once used by humans. Furthermore, it is conceivable that the artworks were associated with two lakes located about 200 kilometers south of the cave. As already mentioned, however, there are also other suggestions for the correct interpretation of the images. For example, the German ethnologist Hans Rotert thought it more likely that the drawings did not depict lively swimmers, but rather deceased persons. The beliefs of the French expert Jean-Luc Le Collec are also along similar lines. He has pointed out some parallels to the grave texts which suggest that the figures are the souls of the dead floating in the water of Nun. A brief explanation of the context. The ancient Egyptian god Nun and his wife Nanette formed a mythological divine couple. While Nun represented the upper heaven outside of the earth, Nanette stood for the waters of the afterlife. Given the comparable works of art have also been found in other nearby caves, such as the Cave of the Beasts, and that the figures form a straight line, it is also possible that the paintings show developmental concepts that were later applied to the transformation of the Nile Valley. But while the question of the true background continues to await an unequivocal answer, as does the question of the creators, one thing is undisputed. The movie The English Patient not only made the Cave of the Swimmers world famous, but also took a toll on it. Although the cave shown in the movie is not the original, but a replica, the ancient site experienced an unprecedented rush of visitors after the movie was released. Incredible as it may seem, some visitors thought it would be a good idea to remove parts of the paintings to take home as a personal souvenir. Other pictures were damaged because visitors supplied water or oil to them to increase the contrast for their photos. 
Furthermore, the cave walls have also been embellished with the odd modern tourist graffito, not to mention the rubbish that the crowds carelessly leave behind. Although measures have been already taken to contain the damage to the cave, this irreplaceable testimony to the past is still considered to be at risk. It is to be hoped that it was defied the ravages of time for thousands of years, will not disappear within a few decades. But what you are happy to change with a single click is your subscription status. Click on the thumbs up and on subscribe now, so you'll never miss another new video from us again.